good. So let's talk about what is OpenSUSE Leap. Uh, so we have two distributions in OpenSUSE. Actually, you could say maybe even more if you would count microOS and so on. But if we, if we talk about the main ones, it's, it's Leap and Tumbleweed, right? And the Leap, uh, I like to say, is trying to bridge community enterprise. And it's the distribution which is based on the uh, latest version of SUSE Linux Enterprise uh, available to the date with typically a 12 month release cycle. I really like to use work typically here because of some of the next slides and uh, the latest version of SUSE Linux Enterprise is also important for the very last slide. Uh, so the uh, when earlier this year we had the retrospective uh, and we asked users what do they value about Leap, you know, how did the release go and so on. Um, seems like the strong sides that were actually embraced by community were the installer stability, seamless migrations, which were reported to be effortless, and, and people in general love the Yast. Like maybe not the entire, you know, all of the Yast uh, parts, but like generally they did. So this would be the, I would say, biggest strengths of Leap. Some of them may actually be applicable also for Tumbleweed, but uh, regarding migrations and stuff, like this is this is the Leap area. Uh, distribution is often profiled as the more stable one and easy to use. Uh, you can see it on Reddit uh, and so on. And, uh, you know, I, I guess that the reason for it that is that there shouldn't be any radical or disruptive changes in between minor updates. So, and that's the that transfers to service packs in sleep, but generally like we shouldn't, you know, completely break down distribution when it comes to package set in between uh, releases. And therefore I expect no issue, no bigger issues on migrations. Box says that, uh, you know, this is the Linux distribution for beginner, beginners and pros. And uh, some users say that this is the DKDE distribution. So this this much about Leap. Uh, is there anybody who didn't hear about Leap before? Just just to double check with the audience. No, that's good. CTLG. Um, there was already talk about Marcus Noga, who who kind of covered the building. containers and closing the leap gap as well. Hear about closing the leap gap or skip the presentation from Marcus? Like I literally have like three slides about it, so um, not much. And I can go a little bit deeper if it's necessary. Okay, I take it that everybody has some broad idea. So CTLG is a SUSE driven effort to bring leap and sleep closer together than ever before. Um, there's, this brings some challenges, you know, some some new opportunities, and also some pros and cons. Uh, I will talk about these opportunities and so on on, the, on my next talk. Here, I really want to talk about these schedules and and, and you know what to expect from next releases. So, um, if if we would look at the effort, uh, some people just see that we will change the way how the distribution is built, but there is a little bit more than that. Um, so, the categories that I see are basically that we are trying to unify the code stream. Um, you know, it may have been the case that Leap and Sleep sources were the same, but if you build them in different build environment, they actually have different outputs, right? Maybe different features are enabled, different RPMs are built and so on. So uh, we really want to unify this. So this is the same uh, with the exception of maybe branding and some other, other features that can be uh, very easily documented. The next part is the concept of building distribution, which is uh, what Marcus was talking about. So we really want to reuse uh, SUSE's Lee signed RPMs and combine it with outcome of OpenSUSE backports, basically build once and ship twice if I simplify it. And um, you will have S390 newly introduced in, in the next version of Leap. And also that comes also with real time that we have from SLE and so on. Um, then there are some tools and processes that we are introducing to community because if you if you base leap like on binaries that, that don't get rebuilt in OBS, you just just sync them over and then use them, like you know you don't have really good way to to you know change these binaries, right? And we really want to make sure that community has tools to uh, submit change code requests against these binaries and you know like maybe open features if, if you don't feel like you know you are glib suspicious but need small change or something like you should have a way and bugzilla is for bugs and this is the case for sleep as well so i really want to make sure that community can use the features uh, you know in the tool which is actually used for feature tracking and it's work you know and engineers work on that in the same tool and so on uh, if you are interested, I have a public talk about this, exactly how the mirroring works, how, you know, the access to Jira looks like, um, and that's on the YouTube. It's, it's a public video from SUSE Labs that took place last week, so feel free to watch it. Um, I guess that if you do something like community requests, SUSE, uh, SUSE Labs, you will, you will find it. 
So open SUSE jam and where we are now. Neil had a question, what's the current status? I hope that this will sort of, you know, give him some idea. And then uh, the link to the go no go decision has some more details than this. Um, that will be on the next slide. So uh, jump is basically the implementation of closing the lead gap. So it's a concept how to build distribution and the processes around basically the three categories that you've seen before. Um, so what do we have? So we have distribution images, which are available available for wider testing since I believe late August, 2020. Um, so these are based on SLEE 15 SPIN2 updates. That's very important. So we are actually, um, you know, so it's SLEE 15 SP2 and some forks of, of features that were rejected. Like for example, uh, SUSE didn't want to introduce uh, maybe support of free Pascal compiler and GDB test results. And therefore we for GDB to rebuild it, you know, it's the same source, it's just, it's either built with or without the support. And um, so we forked that, for example, and, and a few other cases like install images and so on. So this is on top of SP2. There we actually have to take some packages from SP3 to get migration working, for example. So there are a few pieces regarding Yast uh, taken from SP3, uh, but, but the baseline is SP2 updates. Um, Redirection and mirroring of submit request is currently deployed. So you can use that. We can test that if you want, if you reach out to me. So you can basically submit a submission against, let's say, bash in jump 15.2. And if I approve the submission, it will get mirrored into internal SUSE build system. And uh, release manager for SUSE Linux Enterprise depends on you know the origin of the bash, bash package in SLEE. I think this is SLEE 15 updates. So they would actually see submission. And in this case, maintenance team, not, not SLEE release manager, would be processing it. Um, so this works now. And the only part which is missing is reporting back the updates from bots and so on. But I was uh, told that this should be done by end of the month. Um, just to confirm, uh, we cannot just halt SLE, like you cannot create, let's say, 1,000 submissions. Like there is a person who is moderating them. The person is part of the SUSE SLE review team. So basically, it's a new inter a new review in introduced for submissions against SUSE SLE project. And once it's approved uh, with combination of OSC plugin, um, you know, running, like you can actually create the clone of the submission in the IBS. So it's not, it really requires the, the plugin, like it doesn't work just based on the approval. Uh, the, we have a pilot for Jira access to community members. Uh, thank you, Neil, for, for being part of the pilot. So we are regularly meeting uh, on Mondays, like in case, that, you know, like um, there is nothing like blocking it. And we go through currently open features and we make sure that some of them have updates and, and we review what's blocking and so on. And uh, so we have currently a small budget for the pilot. And uh, I'm not sure how it will be in the future. I hope that you know this will get some popularity and we can improve improve the budget and so on. But uh, that I have currently no more information about that, unfortunately. But generally, this is the way how SUSE would like to see it happening. So I believe that support for, from SUSE will be there. Um, seamless migration. Um, this is currently probably the most problemat problematic topic. We still hit some issues. They are being worked out, but like it's not effortless. But what you can expect, like once we are done, is that basically you install, let's say, uh, Chump, and you want to migrate to Sli. And what happens is that uh, you know, aside from enabling the SUSE Sli repos, you will just exchange branding packages and the rest of packages in default installation, unless you choose, let's say, KDE will be identical to sleep packages, so they shouldn't really be reinstalled. And uh, the time actually spent on the migration should be way, way, way shorter. The maintenance setup is unfortunately still in progress. I believe that we are still missing uh, the support for patch info, which is being worked out. Otherwise, to me, there are no other blockers. So zipper update-p uh, wouldn't work with the current setup. Uh, here is the image. I know it's not as nice and simple as on Marcus's uh, slides, but <laughs> basically the green parts are uh, the parts which are introduced as processes or tools. Um, so you can see, uh, can you see my mouse actually when I'm moving it? Um, so if you would look on the upper middle part of the screen, you would see the small diamond, which is the uh, redirection of, of the uh, submission. So if you always submit to to jump or maybe future leap, let's say leap 15.3. 
and based on where the package comes from, if it's backports, if it's if it's SLI, if it's jump because we had to fork the package, like it will be redirected uh, where it's supposed to be. If it's SUSE SLI, you know, you know that there is an extra review. Uh, I will or Max or somebody from OpenSUSE release team will approve the review, and then the the OSC plugin will actually mirror it into internal SUSE. Um, build service and that will actually appear as a regular SUSE submission with, with a big banner that this is a public submission and that the information is being synced out outside to uh, OPS. So, and then once it's accepted, we actually inherit it and then the future version of Leap will basically inherit it as binaries right after the build event finished um, in, the, in the IBS. That triggers the sync and therefore Leap will get, you know, the binary as well or jump in this case, but I, I, I actually draw it before we knew the code name, I believe. So it's leap on the on the picture. Uh, here is the Jira on the left upper part. The, the green box is the uh, Jira features. And there is the contributor who opens them, the little guy on the left. And uh, these get to the process and are processed as regular partner requests, which is nice. We haven't had that before. And yeah, and the sync is on the on the sync of RPMs and sources from IBS to OBS is on the left uh, upper part. Uh, sorry, right upper part. The green, how would you call it? Uh, it's not boxes, right? Um, yeah, and the green cans. Let's say, I think it's a database uh, scheme. What is it used for? So this is the overview of changes. Uh, so let's talk 15Q1. Uh, you may have heard it. You may you may have not. So uh, Leap 15 to 1, you guys can see the screen, right? Um, so this is this is supposed to be an intermediate release. And uh, the release really depends. It was originally aimed at October. Uh, I'm actually aiming it in the first on the first week of November. And it was supposed to enroll the jump concept into production before the next release happened. So, um, you know, with with like I would say, with some parts we are ready. With some parts, I believe that we still need some extra time. Like I would really like to discuss it with all stakeholders uh, and 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 you know, like figure out if if we receive no go for certain parts, like what's the condition, and and if we can actually fix it until the release and so on. Uh, so this is still open topic, whether the release will happen or not. We may also agree on small delay, or we may just agree to go directly to 15.3. Let's let's one, wait until Tuesday. It was supposed to be Monday originally, but some of the stakeholders didn't unfortunately have a time slot in the calendar. So uh, we decided to go for Tuesday morning. Um, the link for the interlock, if you would like to see what we are signing up, is, is, is in the third paragraph. So um, that, that has current list of stakeholders that was uh, sent to factory and project. Uh, so far, Dirk Miller was the person who, who wanted to be added on the list. So he's there now. If you want to be there, feel free to let me know. I can add you. Don't just, you know, like edit the wiki, send me an email because there is also an uh, invitation link with the uh, virtual conference link that, that will take place on, on Tuesday. So uh, just, just email me and I will handle it. Uh, and it's intentionally placed after this conference, right? Because we would like to absorb the feedback from the community because this is um, the aspect that's sometimes being skipped. Like we really want to make sure that, you know, we don't do any any harm to the community and everybody knows what's happening. They know why and they, they see cons and pros. Um, so if you want to, we can we can stay a little bit longer in the chat room. We can talk about uh, talk about it. If something's unclear, you know, like uh, we can you can raise the concern and we can see if we can fix it or if it was maybe already addressed. Um, so OpenSUSE Leaf 15.3. Uh, so based on the OpenSUSE uh, board uh, recommendation or decision recommendation to proceed with the uh, jump concept or, or closing the leap gap, it's expected to be fully based on SUSE Linux Enterprise binary. So why fully based and what about the previous, um, you know, Leaf 15.2.1, what's the difference? So um, I mentioned the unification of code streams uh, on the previous slide that we really want to make sure that, you know, like if, if you would build a package on Leap and SLE, like they would basically have the exact same outputs, even if, you know, they wouldn't be binary identical, right? But they would have basically the same outcomes. And, um, and 
right now, at this moment, we are not done with all the all the packages. So there was roughly 100 something, I think 130 or 120 packages that were different. Let's say there was a Glass Traffic support there wasn't, you know, on one side, on the other, and so on. Uh, free Pascal compiler support in GDB uh, test results on the uh, on leap side, not on SLE side. So we are working them out. Uh, so far, only two features were rejected. Uh, uh, out of 130, so there is really like big effort from SUSE to make sure that they adapt features, which is good. Some people were afraid that we would just start, you know, like removing features, but this is not happening. And always when we actually drop feature, like uh, recently the SDL support in QMO, there is like notification to factory. We talk to maintainer if it makes sense. You know, in this case, uh, we decided to go in favor of GTK. So, you know, it was dropped from not only leap but also from factory so i feel like this is the best case scenario like how we can clean up you know the package and uh so in 15.3 we are expected to be done with all of these 130 right now i believe 40 is missing mainly the word stack so um you know the word the word manager libvert qmu they would be a little bit different in Slee and and, and jump and that will change in 15.3 um so far, I haven't seen any feature to be rejected, except of the QMU UISDL. Uh, so the rest of the Vertstack is expected to be the same, which is good. That's beyond my expectations. Uh, and what did I mention? Yeah, some people ask, when does the Leap 15.3 development starts? So we are now focusing on Jump. And you know, like after the go, no go decision that we will have on next Tuesday, we will basically either proceed with 15.2.1 and then start development, or we will start development of 15.3 right away. Um, so this is basically why the 15.3 is not yet set up in OBS, because we were really focusing on the possibility of the intermediate release, which we will know about next Tuesday. Um, and to be to be fair, you know, um, there is some development already happening, because if you know that it's based on SUSE sleep binaries, um, and 15.3 is actually be, being worked on uh, as we speak. So therefore, uh, for, for 4,000 packages, the development haven't stopped at all you could say the same about factory relation to leap but like uh you know it's not that we are frozen so what about next next release um so that's actually really tricky because uh, if you if you check the link that i shared this is the public presentation by kaiduke about sli 15 roadmap which is currently basically saying that you can expect five service packs and certain you know like dates you know it's it's no secret right we have very predictable releases which are 12 months from each other so you can sort of guess when the next release will be released and um if you if you check um i believe it was slide 17 which was showing uh, when susie usually enrolls future products and this is you know like just me talking to you it's not official statement or anything um it's not in the very last service pack right and if you if you can expect five service packs then you know it will be most likely four or maybe with the fifth one if there will be a new product and since i've mentioned on the very first slide um that leap is based on the latest version of susie linux enterprise um you know may happen that we will be based on not SLE 15 code stream. Uh, and this is this is important to keep in mind. So I see really two options. Either we will be based on uh, SUSE SLE 15 service pack 4, if there is no next generation product, and you know, or we will be based on the next generation product in case that it's compatible with leap type of distribution. So if, if it would be, let's say, um, I don't know, just, just talking crazy, if it would be a rolling release, um, does it make sense to have two rolling releases in OpenSUSE? Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. But like in this case, I, I would consider maybe basing it still on 15 SP4, even when there would be newer product available. So nothing set in stone uh, according to roadmap. Like I told you, the expected 12 months release cycle, when the development should start in next summer. So by next summer, we should already know uh, what's what's the plan. But until, you know, as of today, like I still have these two options that I have to somehow count with. Mm. So, and this is basically it. So now I would like to, you know, hear questions or, or complaints or, or concerns.